My name is Steve, and my wife is a hoarder. It began with plain white yarn. Then it moved on to multicolored yarn of various colors. Eventually, she was getting to some of the hardcore yarn until the point where it developed into colorful tribbles, I guess. So yeah, last week I admitted to my wood hoarding problem, <laughs> but my wife, she has a lot of yarn. She knits a lot. Uh, I'm not even going to tackle all that yarn I just showed you in the shelves because well, I wouldn't even know, begin to know what to do with all of that. But she likes to knit right here, right where I'm sitting. And right over here is where she keeps uh, all of her current knitting things in this cheap plastic container and it's just a mess. One thing she doesn't want is this handle in the middle because it just gets in the way and she really doesn't move this basket around very much. It always just sits here. And she has a lot of little things, little knitting things that are in this little bitty drawer, not even a drawer, a little container there. Uh, she wants to be able to get to those easily and she wants her knitting needles uh, organized in a certain way. She'd also like an area in the back where she can keep her patterns. And this is the knitting box I came up with to my wife's specifications. The three compartments over here are not as deep as these. These are for storing crochet needles and smaller items. Over here, these go all the way down for storing scissors, pencils, and of course longer knitting needles. In the back is a slot for storing her patterns and maybe a book that she might be using at the moment. And of course this huge, large open area just for yarn that she's currently working with. And she really wanted a small drawer to hold small items such as safety pins and, I don't know, straight pins, all sorts of little things like that. And it fits in just like so. I made the box out of cherry and used finger joints to hold it all together. This project fits into the category of projects you will probably never make. <laughs> but it may give you some ideas on ways to solve some of your own storage problems. You can adapt it any way you want. Uh, plus it gave me a chance to give a really good workout to my new table saw. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to start with those finger joints and spend a little bit of time on that because that's a technique you can use in a lot of different situations. This is a real simple jig to make. First what I've done is I've set up a dado stack in my table saw. It's a little over a quarter inch wide. The, the width of that doesn't make any difference. For this box I wanted to go kind of narrow and I also don't have a separate insert plate for my new table saw yet. So that fits in there nicely. And I'm going to lower that dado stack down to the thickness of my board. And I've got a scrap of 3 quarter inch plywood. It's about 18 inches long. And I'm going to clamp it to my miter gauge right around in here. And I'll make one single pass through the board. I've cut a small little block out of hardwood that will slide into that slot and glue it in. Now I want to set this fence and clamp it back into my miter gauge and I want this pin, this outside edge, to be the same distance to the blade as it is its width. Now I'll just make one more notch in that plywood fence. got all four boards to the sides of the box cut and now I'll just run them through the jig. I'll take the edge to one of my boards and I'm going to butt it up right next to that pin. I'm just going to hold this on there tightly and run it through. Now I'll move it over that pin and just keep going all the way down. When you get to the end, then you want to grab the board that is going to join up with that one and you'll butt it up against this one and run it through. 
The way I've worked out mine is it just butts up against that pin. Depending on how you have it set, you may need to press it right up against the board if it overhangs a little bit. And these should mate together about like that. And you know, of course you want to run a few tests and you know, tweak it a little bit before you actually run it. And mine's not too bad. I'm a little butt off here, and, but hey, it's good enough for me. It's all holding together pretty well. I haven't glued it up yet because now I gotta work on all the insides and all the fiddly little bits. And really what that means is just cutting a whole bunch of grooves in the box where I can put dividers in. And all of the dados for the dividers are thinner than I used for the joints. And they're just real shallow, just enough to align those dividers. On one of those end pieces, I'm gonna cut out this rectangle on my bandsaw so that I can get nice square edges on the ends. This is going to be the drawer. With that same dado stack in my saw, I'm going to cut rabbits along the edges of the bottoms of each of the sides. This will hold the bottom panel. I've got the box turned upside down and I've cut out a sheet of eighth inch plywood to use for the bottom. So as long as this fits, and it does, I can go ahead and glue up the box now. I want to show you how I'm going to handle that door. I've cut out a couple of little pieces that will slide in here. And then for the top of the drawer case, this is that board I just cut. And it'll set down like that. And those pieces will also provide a stop for the drawer. And this is the drawer face that will stop in like that. And there is my wife's completed knitting box. I kind of breezed through a lot of this project because it's mainly just cutting a bunch of dados and grooves and sliding the panels in. The main point about this is that if you have an idea for a project and you're not really sure how to accomplish it, give it a lot of thought and uh, it'll all come together in the end if you just take it piece by piece. I spent about three days planning this project, How, especially the drawer. I couldn't really figure out how I was going to do the drawer. It took me about three days of planning to figure it all out and two days to build. <laughs> so it wasn't that bad. And I hope you give those finger joints a shot. I'll talk to you guys later.